What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown. Today we are going to be looking at David Johnson and shoutouts to those who recommended him will be right after the film. David Johnson just might be the most polarizing addition to the Texans in recent years. Is he injury prone? Is he washed? Was he ever really a good running back to begin with? Or can he be the comeback player of the year? Those are the questions I'm going to answer today with the film. I went back and I watched all of his games from 2016 to 2019 and it was tough to put everything together, but I think I cracked the code. Look, I don't think David Johnson is going to be some star running back for us. The Saquon Barkley, the Christian McCaffreys of the world, hell I don't even think he'll be like an Alvin Kamara, Le'Veon Bell, James Conner, that tier. But I do think he's in the best situation right now with the Texans than he's ever been with the Cardinals. He's got a great O-line to block for him and if we keep him in his zone blocking scheme, he could do pretty well for us. Also with all the weapons we have in the passing game, it'll open up things for him underneath, which is going to be key. So that's what I'm going to show y'all today, and if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Now, let's break down the film of David Johnson, because the film don't lie. So instead of starting off with strengths and then going to weaknesses like I normally do, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Just because this is different, I'm going through three years worth of film compared to the one that I usually do. And the first thing I want to talk about is David Johnson's athleticism. You know, as a running back, you do have to be pretty athletic to play the position, obviously. And for David Johnson, his athleticism has always really stemmed off of his elusiveness and agility. It's never really been a straight line speed with him, but he's always been one of the best at making jump cuts like these that I'm showing you. And it was a big, big part of his game back in 2016. You can see he has a great ability to get low and explode off of his plant foot, which is like the outside foot that he's cutting off of. And then boom, he creates so much space and is just able to make defenders look silly. And like I said, this was a huge part of his 2016 game where he had his best season where he put up rushing wise 1200 plus yards, 16 touchdowns and 4.2 yards per carry. And a big reason of that is because he was able to make defenders miss and get extra yards more than was just blocked for him from the O-line. And that's a quality that separates the average from the great and elite running backs. And I'm not going to break down all of these cuts, obviously y'all know what jump cuts are, but this is one that really stood out to me in talking about getting extra yardage from what just your O-line blocked for you. So you can see at this point that the O-line has got nothing for David Johnson. He looks dead right here, the pats are all over it, but he gets low off that left foot, jump cuts to the right, and then it's this second jump cut where he plants off that right foot, boom, explodes past the linebacker and falls into the end zone. That, that's just such a huge play. That is the definition of picking up extra yardage that your O-line has not blocked for you because that could have been a loss or just a no gain, but he's able to rumble forward. And even though this is only like a three, four yard gain, he got into the end zone. He did his job here. And that's all because of his explosive cutting ability. That ability to get low, plant off your outside foot, boom, literally jump. That's why they call it a jump cut. Look at this, his feet are like off the air, creates so much space that that's so hard to do. This is not a normal ability for just an average running back. This is crazy. So before I move on with the film, I really want to quickly talk about the health and injuries of David Johnson. He's gotten the reputation that he's injury prone and that's just not true. As you can see, yes, he did miss that 2017 season, but other than that, he's only missed three games in his entire career. And that 2017 season was lost because of a broken wrist, a complete fluke. It's not like he has constant hamstring issues or other soft tissue injuries, so forget about that narrative that he's injury prone. However, the injury that does worry me a bit was a bit more minor, you know, at the end of the 2016 season, he sprained his MCL, which is in your knee, and, and while he did return in 2017 and was ready to play, looking at his 2018 and 2019 tape, I see someone who does not have the same cutting ability that made him so dangerous in 2016. And maybe it's that he's nearing 30, or maybe his knee was never fully recovered, but the same cuts that he used to make to turn runs for a loss into 5-6 yard gains he just wasn't able to make any more. You remember how he was able to stop on a dime, get low, and explode off that plant leg and create space back in 2016? Well now, you can see that it's a lot tougher for him to make those dramatic motions. He needs to slow down and make multiple steps to cut instead of one big jump cut. And that honestly does concern me because it was a huge part of his 2016 game and you know, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat things for y'all. I bring y'all what I see from the film and the facts, even if what I see isn't something that I want to see. 
and going into 2020 now another year added on to his weight and athleticism whatever it is i i don't know how that cutting ability it, it would be very hard for it to look any better not impossible but it would be hard now athleticism isn't the only thing that makes up a successful running back Vision is honestly the most important aspect, and I want to talk about David Johnson's great ability to read zone blocking schemes. It's something that helps answer the disparity in his yards per carry over the years. In 2016, they ran primarily zone, and he had his second highest yards per carry of his career at 4.2. However, in 2018 and 2019, the Cardinals ran primarily power blocking, and his yards per carry dropped to 3.6 and 3.7, leading to people to thinking that he's an inefficient bad running back. And I'll get into how he reads power in a minute, but let's start with zone. So if you didn't know, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered and our founder, I am young Ari Gold. He actually did an interview with David Johnson, and David himself said that he prefers zone schemes. And you can check out that interview in the description, it's really great. So let's look at the film and see why he's so great in zone. So the Cardinals are running zone to the left of your screen, and the main thing with zone is moving horizontally instead of vertically, and trying to open up holes for your running back that way. Since the run is going to the left, the offensive linemen are trying to cross the face of these defensive linemen, and what that means is that they want to win leverage to the outside. So they want to essentially be blocking the left half of the defensive lineman's body and turn them away from the play. And so David Johnson on this play, he has to read it outside in. So he's looking at the tight end first to see how the edge is and if he can take it or not. But he sees that the edge is set well, so he looks at the right tackle for his next read. However, the defensive lineman has pushed him back a little bit, so he doesn't believe he can hit that either. Now he goes to the next gap and sees that the defensive tackle has leverage on the center because he's shaded to the outside here. So he has to make that cutback because there's just no space on his first three reads. And this cutback is a signature of his game. We saw the crazy jump cuts, but these more subtle cuts are something that are so necessary to a running back in the zone scheme, and they honestly make a huge difference because even if your O-line isn't the best and they can't win that outside leverage, if you can cut it back, that's going to help you escape a lot of trouble. And luckily, David has still shown the ability to make those more subtle cuts over the years. That's not something that he's really lost. And there will be a couple of plays here and there where he makes a great jump cut like this one that's a little bit more like 2016 David but the prevailing consistency throughout the years is that he takes a couple more steps to make these cuts like this one. He takes like three steps instead of just one cut to make that cut back lane but at the end of the day he's still getting the job done here and as long as we keep him in this zone blocking heavy scheme he's gonna thrive for us. I mean we see here 2018, 2019 it doesn't matter. He's able to find this lane here when the front side is blocked up and and I think the important thing to remember here is that the cutback isn't even his first read but he just he just rarely ever actually had that first read open with the shitty Cardinals offensive line that they never were able to open up the edge. However with the Texans that could be completely different. We've invested so much into the offensive line that David Johnson, he's going to be dealing with an offensive line and run blocking that he's never had the luxury of dealing with. Throughout the years, whether it's 2016, 17, 18, or 19, the Cardinals have always had one of the league's worst offensive lines. I mean, if you think ours was bad, theirs was right damn with us. It's pretty sad. There's just so many of these plays where the offensive line, they're just failing him, man, leaving them out to dry. I mean, like, it's the tight ends too, like, just no one's doing their job, that offense was just really dysfunctional, and putting David Johnson in such a hard situation to succeed, because there's only so much a running back can do, their success is so much dependent on the offensive line, and the pieces around them that are helping them block, and I'm really excited to see him in a Texans uniform and behind our offensive line, and it's putting him in the best situation that he's had his entire career, and honestly the main reason for my optimism behind him. And building off of that, and putting David Johnson in the best position, to succeed we've really got to stick to a zone heavy scheme with him i mentioned before he's great in zone but just not as great in gap and his vision here it's just a little bit lacking there are areas where he succeeds which i'll talk about in a little bit but for the most part this is what yielded his his poorer yards per carry in 2018 and 2019 and we saw it even in 2016 when they were running gap for whatever the reason he just wasn't able to make the reads as quickly as he's in zone and that's how it is for a lot of running backs and so on this play you can see here that there's a good gap here to the left of the play where he should follow his center here who's making this great block here on the linebacker at the second level and that's really what opens a big run but for some reason he bounces it right if he makes that cut to the left which we've seen him be able to do in 2016 he make a real explosive cut there's room there for sure now i did say that there are parts of power schemes that david johnson's good at and you can see here that he's good at following pullers he sets up the defender there on the edge pretty well to run into that blocker 
And this is the part of gap schemes that we do run a good amount. We'll have Max Sharping pulling. If you remember in that Chiefs game, he made pulls like these all the time and he was killing on them. He's really great at that. And I made a video on him too. So if you haven't checked that out, it's actually a great example to see how he and David Johnson can work together. I love this one in particular. He just does a really great job of influencing the defender to run into his block. And that's a very underrated aspect of running back play, in my opinion. You're going to see here that... From this pulling block here, he's going to lead it inside a little bit and then boom, take that slight step outside. So he really freezes that linebacker, number 59 here, who he leads him inside to get blocked because he knows that he's not actually going inside. He just wants to influence the linebacker. He knows he's taking this outside the entire way, but he's playing mind games with them. And I love that. And this is something that should translate to the 2020 season because it doesn't really rely on athleticism. It's more about manipulation and being smart about it. And this is just another example in 2019 now where where he leaves it inside a little bit so that gets the block on that linebacker and then boom he cuts it outside and that's just beautiful now the last thing about the running aspect of his game that i want to talk about is his ability to win at the third level so that's beating the safeties in space and winning at this level is one of the biggest things that separates the elite from the pretty good running backs at the beginning of this video, I said not to expect David Johnson to be like Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, and that's because those are the guys that they're just so great at turning these 15, 20 yard runs into 50 and 60 yard touchdowns. And even in the athletic prime of his career in 2016, that just wasn't David Johnson's game. He just, he didn't seem to have that last effort wiggle to beat the safety and really maximize yards. His cuts looked great when he was running horizontally and he would cut more horizontally, but when he's running straight on like this, head on, like it wasn't as great cutting ability. And yes, this is getting pretty nitpicky here, but when you're making $13 million as a running back, that's elite money. And so to get the best value out of the running back, I would hope you can make elite level plays. But you know, I'm not going to harp on that for too long because it's it's really just not a huge issue that we should be worrying about. But just temper your expectations a little bit. And you know, I wouldn't really expect a lot of like 50 yard, 60 yard touchdowns out of David Johnson. So we've talked a lot about the running game, but David Johnson is a dual threat. That's why Bill O'Brien loves him because he's a threat in the passing game as well. And in 2016, when he was making those amazing cuts, his yak after he'd make a catch was ridiculous. He was able to turn these five yard gains into 20, 30 yard gains just by making some simple cuts. And that was honestly such a huge part of his receiving game. And it really made him such a dangerous weapon because adding that to our offense, last year with Carlos Hyde, teams knew when he was in the game, we were gonna run it. But now with David and Duke Johnson, teams have no idea. And so adding this threat is gonna be huge. However, this yak was something that Yes, it was apparent in 2016, but in 2018 and 2019, it was just, it wasn't as apparent, it wasn't as dynamic. On this play here, it's third and seven, and David Johnson, he has a cut that if he makes this cut to the inside and avoids the tackle, he could have gotten the first. But for some reason, he just continues running out of bounds and doesn't even try. And I honestly think a lot of that has to do with his diminishing athletic ability. Now, the thing that pissed me off the most about David Johnson's film was his route running. People say he's an elite receiving back, but I was super disappointed by his pretty lackadaisical routes. I mean, on this one, he runs it so slow that the defender can get back into the play and break it up, but he should have never had a chance to. And on this one, he just runs not a great route on this one. He kind of just runs straight. There's not really any head fakes or anything. And, and yeah, he gets open and gets the catch, but against better defenders, that's not going to cut it. And while he had great receiving numbers over the years, so much of that was because of the offense he was in and them scheming him open really well. I mean, look at these plays like running back screens. Bill O'Brien almost never runs running back screens. I actually have the total number of running back screens he ran last year, which is four. Four, that's it. And the Cardinals were also good at running pick routes out of the backfield or even pseudo screens where, where wide receivers are going out to block and it's just designed for David Johnson to get the ball. Now, the thing is that I thought about this for a while and this aspect of him, it doesn't have to be a negative, you know? Okay, he's not a great route runner, but Duke Johnson is, and we can ask him to run crisp routes while we scheme David Johnson open. Here's a play I love where he runs an angle route and these two offensive linemen, they'll leak out and make blocks in space, kind of like screen. And that's a great design that hopefully Bill O'Brien can do something similar with. Now, another thing is David, he was left open with a lot of space to work with underneath and defenses will have to give him that with us as well. If they take away Cooks, Fuller, and Cobb over top, which they need to, they need to respect that, we can just dump it off to Johnson underneath. You know, it's really a pick your poison type of offense and he may not be perfect, but he can still be a contributor and difference maker for this offense. 
All right, that'll do it for my David Johnson film breakdown. Thank you to those who recommended him. So shout out Jonathan Jones, Ryan Spencer, Lauderdale, LKNG4, Gabriel Porter, Ryan Blair, and DF Productions. I apologize if I pronounce anyone's names wrong or miss someone's recommendation. I really do love interacting with y'all in the comments and want to input your ideas. But now back to David Johnson, this was one of the tougher evaluations I've had to make so far. There's just a lot of context that you got to know to understand David's situation, but just summing it all up, what I talked about today, just really quickly, no, I don't think David Johnson is going to win Comeback Player of the Year. I have nothing against him, obviously I hope he proves me wrong and does win it, I love that. But from what I've seen from the film, his lack of elusiveness and loss of cutting ability, it does worry me. He's also not the pure receiving threat I thought he was with kind of lackadaisical route running, but that doesn't mean that he can't be effective. He doesn't have to be the star or the focal point of the offense. He's going to have so much attention taken off of him because of the dangerous weapons we've got, and the Texans run a lot of zone and a lot of power with pullers, so we're a great scheme fit for him. The O-line is honestly the biggest factor. They're going to have great continuity together and create lanes for David that he's never experienced. So I think he's in a great situation to, maybe he's not going to be breaking records, but he's still going to be in a position to succeed. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. If you're still listening, you're a real one. I appreciate you, and the question of the day is going to be, what do you predict David Johnson's 2020 stats will be? Let me know. Also, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered. I write articles on our great website, and we've got an awesome weekly podcast on all your typical platforms as well. So if you're itching for more Texans content, we got you. The links will be in the description. All right, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more. Videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Videos go live at 12 Central Time. All right, take care, everyone.